Hi everyone, I'm Matteo Collina, Platformatic co-founder and CTO. And today we are going to talk about uh, node underscore environment and why that's a huge problem. So um, let's let's start. So node and production is a lie. Uh, a little bit of things, a couple of things about me. Hello, um, part of the Node.js Stack and Casting Committee, co-founded Platformatic, uh, board member OpenJS Foundation. You're probably um, using some of my software created Fastify and Pino. And um, I got 17 billions of downloads last year. Next year, so this year, 2023, probably going to be 20, around 2022 20, billion, something like that. I have a GitHub sponsor page. So if you're using my software and you are using my software, please go to my GitHub sponsor and start donating. Thank you. I'm joking. Um, so um, let's talk a little bit about the source of the all the underscore node underscore have problems um, that you can phantom. Um, node underscore have is... Uh, um, is a story of semantic misunderstanding, and this picture is courtesy of um, ChatGPT. So, hello, ChatGPT. Thank you. And uh, why? Well, um, why is a semantic misunderstanding? Let's unpack it for a second. Okay. First of all, env, e n v stays stays for environment. Okay, it's an environment. So then, what you can do, and you can ask, uh, for example. Um, Wikipedia, what uh, uh, environment is in software. And, you know, let's see, let's take a look, okay? And, well, first of all, environment is not, nothing green. And these are my mountains, by the way, I took these pictures. I love them. And, uh, yeah, let's check Wikipedia. So, Wikipedia, if you start looking for environment, you go into, you go into the deployment environment. And uh, Wikipedia reports that in software deployment, an environment is a computer system in which computer program or software component is deployed and executed. So it's, some, it's a server, okay? It's something where we execute code. Okay, this seems fun, right? It's, it's a server. Uh, is it a server? Is, the, is, the, is, is an environment a server? Okay, we're, okay good. So uh, Wikipedia recommends a few naming for, for, for those. And maybe you should not use Wikipedia as the source for all the things in software development, but it's a good point. So typically, we could, Wikipedia says there is a local environment, which is the developer's machine. Then with this development, which is a developer server for, for, for testing, okay? And then with an integration, there is a test environment. Then we have a staging and we have a production. Okay. Good. This seems fine, right? I don't know. i would not sure if I can add more here. And then... Ruby on Rails came along a few years back, maybe in it was 2006, something like that, maybe earlier when Ruby on Rails came along. And Ruby on Rails said something very nice. It started shipping with an embedded configuration system, and it started saying that there were three environments. There was development, staging, and production. Oh, wait a second. So there is a development, test, and production. Sorry, development, test, and production. So there was three environments, development, test, and production. Seems great. They match to the ones in Wikipedia, right? Do them? Really? Like, do them? Are we sure? Well, for Ruby on Rails, the development meant the developer's machine. Again, image courtesy of ChatGPT. Thank you. So, wait a second. It, the development machine is the developer's machine. It, my laptop. My laptop is my, is my development environment. Okay, good. Test. Test is when I run my unit tests on my machine. Okay. Or wait a second. What is productions? Okay, production is a server. Okay. Right. However, for every op operations and DevOps person on the planet, the development environment is a server running software. And now we have two things with the exact same name. And now we are, we are in huge trouble because this is the source of a huge misunderstanding and the source of all the problem of node underscore dev. In fact, the whole point of having multiple environments is that they should be as close to production as possible to catch all the bugs. Okay, you want to be able to test your code and you want to be able to reproduce the problems both on development on, on all environments so that having a bug that you can only reproduce in production it's problematic okay you know how many times did it happen that you had a bug that you can only reproduce in production how many 
And really, like, no one wants that. Like, zero. Do you want them? Do you, do, do you really want the stuff? I personally don't. Like, I've never been and I've never wanted that kind of stuff. Okay? And, uh, yeah, so, yeah, probably not a good idea. Okay? So, okay. So, uh, at some point in the story of Node, and we'll get to that a little bit, um, somebody started adding code like that and uh, um, specifying behavior that only happens in production. Oh, wait a second. Okay. This seems cool. What's the problem? Well, then, same person, or maybe another person, started adding no dev um, equals equals staging, because that behavior only happens on the staging environment. Okay. What's the problem? Well, it's it's a total rec rec recipe for disaster, okay? A lot of modules start having special behavior for node underscore env, and then some other modules start saying to differentiate called the staging server, this node env setting it to staging, for example. And then the modules that had the behavior set equals equals production were you know, only enabling that in the production environment, right? Which now it's different. You know, you see there is the staging environment on your machine, the staging environment, but because some modules are reacting to this node env special environment, node underscore env variable, now it's, it's not production anymore, okay? This is a huge trouble. And in fact, the only sane way to set node underscore env is to use it and set it to production for all server environment. So if you are deploying to, if you're running your code on a staging environment or a development environment or a um, UAT, QA, whatever you want to call it, you need to set your um, node underscore env equals to production. <laughs> okay, it's completely unintuitive, right? Well, I know you. You probably know this. Uh, one of my favorite dishes is carbonara, and uh, but I don't really like spaghetti code, so maybe. So uh, let's chat a little bit about where Node underscore Dev come from because this is actually very funny. So the first concept is Node Core has no concept of Node underscore Dev, and this is just a user land concern. So this happens only in in um, in user land in modules on npm. And the first thing that I thought is this is was introduced by Express. And does it, is it, it wasn't introduced by Express. Well, I, you know, because, you know, there is, there is, and this is this comment that we can open even. And here you can see that this is done using connect proto usage and these start doing no them. So I thought we might think this is actually Express that added it. Well, no, I'm sorry, it was not Express. This was added a little bit earlier by um, uh, Tim Caswell. Hi, Tim, you're great, okay? Um, and uh, in uh, in 2010, in Connect. Okay, Connect is the antecedent of, of Express, okay? Oh, sorry. And, and this was added in 2010 uh, in uh, uh, a connect 0 0.2.6, something like that, like really like a long time, long time ago. Okay, and before that, it was called connect env, which actually made a, a lot more sense to me than node env, but this was invented at this point and it was made it uh, framework agnostic. Okay. Well, he didn't go that well. Also, why? Because uh, a few years later, when bundlers started becoming extremely popular, uh, we started seeing um, uh, module, uh, modules that uh, started to, uh, in, in front-end modules, that started to use the node envir environment variable to turn on and off certain debug features. So if you're using Webpack, the Webpack guide reports that Many libraries will key off the process env node env variable to determine what should be included in the library. Wait a second. So now we have front-end code that relies on node underscore env to turn on and off optimization and things like that. Okay. So imagine that you're building your system and you set this to staging, then you build your app, and then your front-end bundle is completely different between staging and production. What? Like, 
what? Don't, don't do this, okay? Just don't, don't set this to anything but production. I just want to reiterate a little bit of non-comprehensive list of libraries using Node.env because, you know, I, I, uh, there is a lot and I don't want to, uh, I just want to, don't want to steer uh, too much trouble for me. But for example, you can check Adonis, you can check Nest.js, Express. There is this module called config. This is probably the worst offender of them all. Uh, and a lot of people are using this stuff. Even TRPC is using uh, Node.env, so um, probably just cite it to production and forget. This is actually probably the worst one that you can get, mostly because you you see you have the config, and the the configuration is literally selected by Node.env, and this is being downloaded a million times per week. Like I'm, I'm, I'm uh, I have no words here. Like literally, I have no words. Like this is don't do that. Okay, don't use this module. It's it's a recipe for disaster. Okay, don't do it. For the reason that we just talked about. Okay, you you want it to set it to production and forgot. So, um, cool. And uh, so, how do you manage your configurations? Uh, well, it's actually very simple. You want to build a twelve-factor app. Okay, this is is still a thing. Okay, you know this is this was introduced a long time ago, and to be honest, it even says you know um, store config in the environment. Like, still do that okay like this seems very you know old but it's still there okay in fact it's uh, um you uh, want to set node underscore env production everywhere and forget about this exist at all and in fact you'd even you shouldn't really do this okay having something that is only turned on in the staging environment like don't do this okay don't 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 please make yourself a favor and Instead, you want to be very selective and add uh, an if on uh, if my awesome feature is is enabled. Okay, you want to enable feature by feature. You don't want to enable them in the environment. Just enable them by feature. Why? Because now you are explicit in what's in on and off on each one of the environment, and you can actually manage your configuration in a much more deliberate way. So this is fun. And yeah, I don't know. This is maybe a little bit liberating. I um, I'm talking a little bit about config next week, so you can probably check it out. This 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 is the QR code. It's even on the platformatic.dev website, so you can even ping that that thing there. Um, and um, yes, let's take a look. And now we do it in 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 platformatic. Uh, you probably have heard a little bit about platformatic in this channel a few times, but it has built-in support for environment variables, just works. And uh, um, I love this slide, by the way. It's uh, um, platformatic helps you uh, uh, develop APIs very quickly, and it allows you to move from A to B. But you know, in order for A to B, typically you pass through C, and we we allow you to go to C very quickly using like I don't know, very high speed train. And then um, we let you do the final leg of your journey using a nice uh, uh, electric SUV. So um, we combine the both the speed and you know customizability on the same tool. So let's 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 do uh, let's do a demo, okay? And here uh, CD demo. Here we go. Clear. Okay. So let's start with this with by doing a, a create platformatic. command here we go and we create a service we create in this folder yes and yes and um, we are not using type C for now yes I'm not going to deploy anything and no git cool we are just installing as usual npm install is my old friend it takes a little bit of time while we are waiting you can uh, if you if you want to do uh, my, if you want to register for the masterclass, it's available here. Uh, the full content of this is uh, going uh, live next Tuesday, uh, uh, November 21st. But if you are watching this later, the uh, um, it's uh, um, so on the third November 21st we are going to do this. And if you if you are interested, you can take a look. And uh, the, the full recording of that will be available online. So that's cool. And uh, yes, um, yes, the masterclass will be available on YouTube in as soon as we edit it, I think, in the next few weeks. So 
and uh, yes um so uh, we have we have done our project so now um well, let's take a look at what we have here and here we go and then we have uh, env uh, and sample so uh, as you can see it's the is done by the configuration for platformatic is done by the dot and files and it actually uses dot env internally like this is as you can see these things are environment variable so we can get the host name and the port in 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 our oh, in our environment variables so you can see this we have plt server host name and uh, plt port so let's see imagine that we want to um, add another uh, um, another environment variable let's call it plt uh, live uh, let's call it plt hello and call it ciao and now what we can do for example is we can actually pass our um, environment variable to our plugins and uh, we can read it like plt hello here we go so that's what we do and then in our plugins we can say for example fastify decorate greeting opt um, greeting okay um so here we go now we can npm start oh it's missing fun you see so um pltlo did i save this i probably didn't so here we go oh um yes i have another system running funny okay i was doing a slightly slight little demo okay and this is running and now we can see it uh, our platformatic service we can open it up we have our example cool so now we can go back and edit our route to and here we have this is the greeting right so instead of saying hello we can take a look at uh, fastify dot greeting okay and now if i run it let's see here we go you see ciao okay so um so let's take a look it's uh, uh, what's what we've done so here we have changed our uh, uh, repository our, our route saying to access the greeting which then is set inside here so we set the greeting via the options this is populated by the environment variable here plt low that gets in our config file which then goes into the options of our plugin and then it's we can access it as a decorator in our in our app and now this is there and it we get it we can get it here and then it's uh, we can even flip it and say i don't know salute if we like francais and now you can see that we have this so everything works more or less as you would expect it would so um yes uh i think that's all um thank you very much for watching and i think um that's it thank you very much and bye bye